Hello, welcome back. Now in this lecture we discuss Petrovsky F score. We will go through the entire formulation as done by Petrovsky in 2002 and how they are applied to value forms. This is a slightly long lecture so feel free to pause the video whenever it's necessary for you and go back and forward as and when it is required for you. As a bottom line, Petrovsky's F score is a number between 0 and 9 which is used to assess the strength of a company's financial position. 0 being the least favorable and 9 being the most favorable. Petrovsky's F-score is used by financial investors in order to find the best value stocks to invest in. Petrovsky F-score is named after Professor Joseph Petrovsky who formulated this paper in the year 2002. Before we start discussing the formulation of the F-score, let us go through the abstract of the Petrovsky paper as published in 2002. In any financial doc document or white paper which is published, it is very important to go through the abstract. The abstract gives you the complete story of what is the whole paper is discussing about. So it is very important to understand the abstract to understand why and how to apply the paper's contents. I have provided here the abstract as is present in the paper written by Joseph Petrovsky. It will be a good idea to pause the video and go through the abstract. I will read the abstract for you and go through the important points as is discussed here. The paper examines whether a simple accounting based fundamental analysis strategy when applied to a broad portfolio of high book to market firms can shape the distribution of returns earned by an investor. Now the important point to note here is high book to market firms. We know that value stocks have a characteristics that they have a low price to book value. Now the price to book value is the market value divided by the book value. Now the opposite of that is the reciprocal of that is book value divided by the market value. So if the price to book value is to be low, the it means the firm has to have a high book to market value. This establishes the fact that Petrovsky is discussing value stocks. The abstract further reads, I show that the mean return earned by a high book to market investor can be increased by at least 7% annually through selection of financially strong book market firms while the entire distribution of realized returns is shifted to the right. In addition, an investment strategy that buys expected winners and shorts expected losers generates a 23% annual return between 1976 and 1996 and the strategy appears to be robust across time and to control for alternative investment strategies. Now a few things are very significant here. First thing is that the paper discusses about value for value stocks. And then the paper says that if we buy the expected winners and sell, shorting means selling, sell the expected losers, we can generate 23% extra returns as was shown between the time period that Petrovsky studies. The most important aspect what the paper says is that the strategy appears to be robust across time. So we can still apply the Petrovsky's formula in our modern times. In fact, it is very applicable in mar emerging markets like India etc. I leave it to you to read the rest of the abstract. I would encourage you highly to read the complete paper. It is available in the internet. In Petrovsky's formulation of web's code, Petrovsky has suggested that we evaluate each stock. Here we must remember evaluate a value stock. So we evaluate every value stock on 9 parameters. Now on each parameter, we will give a score to the stock. On each parameter, a stock gets a score of either 0 or 1. There is nothing in between. So either the score is 1 or it is a 0. So, Petrovsky's F score is always an integer between 0 and 9. So, the stocks can earn a number between 0 and 9. Higher the number, more the number towards 9 or 9 itself, the stock is supposed to be a better purchase. Now, we discuss each of the 9 parameters. Before we start discussing the parameters, let us take a stock which we will use as an example. This will help understand the Petrovsky parameters much better as we will be discussing real numbers from the 
annual reports of this particular stock. Now the stock which we have taken is Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited. You see that the PE is 4.89, so it's a low PE. The PB is also 0.95, it's a low PB. However, the dividend yield is also very low. Uh, so we can consider this as a value stock, though in our formulation it doesn't fully qualify as a value stock. It should be noted that Petrovsky only considers PB as the parameter based on which a value stock is identified according to Petrovsky. So we can consider this stock because the PB is very low. Petrovsky says the high book to market value stocks are value stocks. So th this is a high book to market stock. So we can consider this as a value stock. We will consider this example of Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals for discussing the various parameters of Petrovsky. The first parameter is ROA, Return on Assets. Now, Return on Assets is calculated as net income before in extraordinary items divided by total assets at the beginning of the year. Now, Petrovsky uses the assets at the beginning of the year. Normally, we calculate ROA as net income divided by the total the average of the uh, total assets of the previous year and the current year however pitrasky considers total assets at the beginning of the year now if roa figure is greater than 0 pitrasky assigns a value of 1 otherwise he assigns a value of 0 now we know that if return on assets is increasing then either the net income is increasing or the average total assets is decreasing a company can arrive at a high ROA either by boosting a profit margin or by more efficiently using the assets. The higher the ROA, the better it is for the company because the company is earning more on less investments. From the annual report of Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited for the year 2017-18, I gathered that the net income before extraordinary items is about 79,000 crores and the total assets at the beginning of the year 2017-18 was about 443,000 crores. So the ROA for Gujarat Alkaline and Chemicals Limited works out to 0 0.178. So the ROA is greater than 0 and so on the first parameter of ROA we give a score of 1 to Gujarat Alkaline and Chemicals Limited. The second parameter Petrovsky considers is cash flow from operations. We know that a high cash flow indicates that the company is earning higher revenues, it has got lower overheads and the efficiency of the company is higher. Cash flow from operations can be calculated as cash from operations divided by total assets at the beginning of the year. Notice that Petrovsky considers total assets again at the beginning of the year. If the cash flow from operations is greater than 0, Petrovsky assigns a score of 1, otherwise he assigns a score of 0. From the annual report for 2017-18, I gathered that the cash from operations is nearly 251,000 crores. So for Gujarat Alkaline and Chemicals Limited, the CFO works out to 0.566. Now again, CFO is greater than 0, so we assign a score of 1. The third Petrovsky parameter is Delta ROA. Delta ROA is the difference between the current year ROA and the previous year's ROA. We know that ROA means that how much we are earning on the assets that we have got. So higher the ROA means that we are having more income from lesser amount of assets. So if this trend is on the, on the increase, then Petrovsky gives a score of 1. So if the Delta ROA is greater than 0, then Petrovsky assigns a score of 1. Otherwise, he assigns a score of 0. Now, we calculate Delta ROA for Gujarat Alkalines and Chemicals Limited. We had found that the current year's ROA was 0 0.178. Now, from the annual reports of 2016-17, I gathered the figures for, the, for calculating the previous year's ROA. So, the previous year's ROA works out to 0 0.119. So, Delta ROA is 0 0.178 minus 0 0.119 which works out to 0 0.059. So, Delta ROA is greater than 0 and thus Gujarat Alkaline and Chemicals Limited scores a 1 on Delta ROA. The fourth Petrovsky parameter is accruals. Accruals are basically the services which have been rendered, services or products which have been rendered. However, the, the cash has not flown into the company as a result of that services of the product delivery. 
Now accruals basically means that the company has got money on the books but the money is not realized yet. So if the accruals are high then there is a chance of default as well. It may be possible that the company has actually done the work but the money it cannot receive because the paying party does not honor the contract. We had a recent case in India where Reliance Telecommunications was not paying Ericsson a sum of nearly 700 crore rupees for many years for the equipments which it had bought from Ericsson. So companies with high accrual is seen as a risky company. Accrual can be calculated as cash flow from operations minus return on assets. So if accrual is greater than 0, assign a value of 1, otherwise assign a value of 0. For Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited, we already calculated that the cash flow of cash flow from operations is 0.566 and the return on assets is 0.178. So 0.566 is greater than 0.178 and thus the CFO is greater than ROA. So on the accruals front, we give a score of 1 to Gujarat Alkalines and Chemicals Limited. Pitrovsky's fifth parameter is Delta Leverage. Delta Leverage basically measures the in increase or decrease in debts in the current year over the previous year. So Delta Leverage is calculated as current year long term debts divided by average total assets of the last two years minus the previous year's long term debts divided by the average total assets for the last two years. Now, if delta leverage is greater than zero, it means the debts have increased in the current year over the previous year. So, it is seen as a negative sentiment. So, Pitrovsky assigns a score of zero if delta leverage is greater than zero. And if delta leverage is, leverage is less than zero, it assigns a score of one. From the annual reports of Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited, I gathered the figures of current year long-term debts and the previous year's long-term debts. Also, I gathered the total assets in 2017, 2016 and 2015. Now, we put these figures into the formula for delta leverage and we get a delta leverage of 0.012. So, the delta leverage is greater than 0. So, Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited scores a 0 on the delta leverage parameter. The sixth parameter is delta liquid. Delta liquid is calculated as current ratio of the current year minus the current ratio of the previous year. We know that the current ratio is the ratio of current assets by current liabilities. So current ratio basically indicates the company's ability to pay its current short term debts. Now if the current, ra current ratio is greater than the previous year's current ratio that means the company has better abilities to pay its short term debts as compared to the last year. If it is less than the, if the current ratio of the current year is less than the current ratio of the previous year it means the ability to pay short term debts is reduced. That's why Petrovsky says if the delta liquid is greater than 0, assign a score of 1, otherwise assign a score of 0. From the annual reports of Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals, I have got the current asset and the current liabilities of the current year and the current assets and current liabilities of the previous year. So using these figures, we can calculate delta liquid and the delta liquid works out to be 0.187. So delta liquid is greater than 0. So we assign a score of 1 to the parameter delta liquid for Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited. Petrovsky's seventh parameter is equity capital. Equity capital is the amount of equity offered in the current year. So Petrovsky says that if equity capital is less than or equal to 0, assign 0, otherwise assign 1. In the financial year 2017-18, the equity share capital for Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited is greater than 7000 crore rupees. So the equity capital is greater than 0 and thus we assign a score of 1 on parameter 7 for Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited. Parameter number 8 is delta margin. Delta margin is calculated as gross margin ratio of the current year minus the gross margin ratio of the previous year. The gross margin ratio is calculated as gross margin divided by total sales. Now if the delta margin is greater than 0, we assign a score of 1, otherwise we assign a score of 0. For Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited, I gather the figures of gross margin and total sales for the current year and the gross margin and total sales for the previous year from the annual report. 
Now then putting into the formula for delta margin, we get the delta margin as 0.0702. So delta margin is greater than 0. Thus, Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited gets a score of 1 on the parameter delta margin. The ninth and the last parameter is delta turnover. Delta turnover is calculated as asset turnover ratio of the current year minus the asset turnover ratio of the previous year. Asset turnover ratio is calculated as total sales divided by total assets at the beginning of the year. Now if turnover, the delta turnover is greater than 0, we assign a score of 1, otherwise we assign a score of 0. From the annual reports, we had already gathered the figures of total assets for the previous year and we had already gathered the figures for total sales for the current year and for the previous year both. Now putting these values into the formula for delta turnover, we get delta turnover as 0 0.023. So delta turnover is greater than 0. So Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited gets a score of 1 on delta turnover. So we have gone through the 9 parameters of Petrovsky F score. These 9 parameters are devised by Petrovsky to generate what he called the F score. The 9 parameters were re return on asset, cash flow from operations, delta ROA, accrual, delta leverage, delta liquid, equity capital, delta margin and delta turnover. For future illustrations, we will codify each of these parameters as F1, F2, etc. up to F9. Now for the stock Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited, we evaluated all the 9 parameters and got the values what we required from the formula what was given by Petrovsky. Based on these value, values we extracted, we gave a score to each of the parameters which are shown in this table. Now to generate the F score, we just add up all the scores for the individual parameters and arrive at the F score. So for Gujarat Alkalis and Chemicals Limited, the F score is 8. So according to Petrovsky, this should be a very good value stock. With this we have seen how to calculate the F score for a particular value stock. Thank you for listening. See you in the next lecture.